She was like, look, you always doing whatever you're doing. You got two choices. You can go to Laugh Factory Comedy Camp. Or you can go to psychiatric therapy. Because something is wrong with you. Right. The Were way you you're afraid reaching, of the word psychiatric therapy? Yeah, because mom? my mom was going to it, doing it. The drugs they would give her, she would be drooling. She she got really fat. Like, you um, know, it's... Uh, it was like almost I would prefer her not on the medication. Tiffany Haddish. Yes. <sighs> it's a pleasure to have you here. Tiff, let me tell you, dude, your energy is amazing. And with your energy, dude, you bring so many smiles to people, right? And people could say, oh, that, that's your job. How happy are you for real. You know how they say comedy starts in a dark place, but how happy are you? Because you you throw out happiness. Oh, I live in the dark. Really? <laughs> right? I live in the dark. I live in the dark, but like, um, I don't know, when I see other people, I, I light up. So, yeah. and being around others, you know, I just light up. When I'm at home alone, I can be pretty negative. Right. I like try to get all the negativity out before I go before into go the back world. Out. Right? Let it out in the house, in the shower. Yeah, I cry and I be oh, Lord, put my whole heart out to God, right? And then like I get in the mirror, program myself for what the day gonna be, and then I go out for the adventure. Dude, do you feel as some sometimes like people want you to be funny all the time? Yeah, and that's not gonna happen. Right. How do you handle that? I just be me. Do people ever ask you what's wrong? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I'd be like, what's well, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I get people, too, like, and, and I'm a happy person. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I've been through a lot. So I know what happiness is. I know what being sad is. I know what homelessness is. I know that I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody could be happier. Everybody. But I know I'm happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I get people that, if I'm just kind of, like, chill and it's not what you hear on the radio sometimes, mm -hmm. I get people that'll say, oh, are you Okay. Yeah. You know, do you find yourself having to turn yourself on all the time or sometimes? I won't even turn myself on. If somebody's like, are you okay? Right. I'm like, are you okay? Right. Do you need something from me? And they're like, no, no, it's just right. quiet. Right. Right. I'm not meant to talk all the time. Mm -hmm. God gave me two ears, one mouth. Yeah. How was growing up for you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Not easy. Right, right. But, um... I think it was necessary, but everything that happened while I was growing up, I think it built me up to be strong enough to handle what I'm handling. Growing up, it's not the easiest path for you, and you got such a story. What was the relationship, of course, with like you and your mom early on? Well, um, at first it was okay. Mm -hmm. She might not have been the nicest mom, but she was. She had some love in her. She was giving mm -hmm. out some love, and she had a really bad car accident, and. I feel it. I used to be like, I used to think, like, sh maybe she died and uh, some demon or something jumped inside of her that hate my guts, mm -hmm. hates me. So mean to me, um, very violent towards me. Physical? Physically violent, lost a lot of teeth. Uh, but hey, the, the grown up ones came through, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and how old are you around this time? Eight. Eight. That's a lot to bear for anyone. Yeah, seven turning eight. So, so you could immediately see that your mom from the accident that she was she different. Changed. She had to learn how to walk, talk, eat, everything all over again, right? And then she didn't she barely remembered us. She said I look like her daughter, but um I was too old, right? And then it got to the point where like basically everything that she had taught me at that point, I was teaching her. And fortunately, she taught me a lot. Like I knew how to wash dishes. I knew how to tie shoes. I knew how to wash clothes. I knew how to clean. I knew how to do a lot of things. And she just had my little sister, you know, so I was helping take, I was taking so care like of them. like role reversal. Yeah. At eight. And I just wanted to make her happy. You know, mm -hmm. she the first person I ever loved. And like, I didn't know who God was till she taught me about God, right? All I knew is like, she's God. Mm -hmm. She's the person that fed me. She's the person that will hold me. She's the person, you know, who taught me a lot. But, uh, but she did not come back. I feel like that's not who came out that hospital. Somebody else did. When we're at home, we're more like this is the sanctuary. This is with everything that I got to deal with outside. Once I get home, you you no, kind of put your outside was down. the sanctuary. Yeah. 
outside was a safe place. School, like I might not have been learning much. Well, I, I definitely was learning how to hustle. Um, right, definitely right. learning how to work the system. Um, but uh, that was my safe. That was like this is my domain. This is my safe place, right? If somebody do something to me here, there's witnesses. You know, yeah. you got. Uh, and then I had was learning how to wield my power of. You know, getting people to do things for me, let me copy their homework, let me, you know, because I couldn't, I barely could read. Yeah, right? I know I you said could you couldn't read to like, Until I was like 16. And my drama teacher figured it out and yeah. sat me down. I was like 15, about to be 16. Sat me down and made me read to her every day at lunch. Because you said you was kind of getting away with everything. You know what I'm saying? Things. Like, yeah. you, your memory was always good. You have somebody read it to you. Oh, I like, I like the way your voice is. Read it to me. You would yeah. lock it in. Lock it in. And then just, you know, Was working. that always scary, too, about, you know, sometimes we don't want to be exposed at whatever age. Was that scary for you? Hell yeah, that was scary. But I would just make it, like, at that point, I had learned how to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd get somebody to read to me at lunch, whatever, brunch, well, not brunch, what is that right. called? Nutrition. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, uh, first thing in the morning, breakfast. Or on the school bus. The school bus is where I was, like, making it. I went to school right down the street from yeah. me. I went to Hale Middle School, and I went to El Camino Real High School, right? So, like, it, on them school buses, I was working. In elementary school, it was harder. It was harder because it wasn't, like, we were contained right, more, right? right? So it was, like, get to school early, get to talking to somebody. Or if I know we're going to do this chapter or this chapter, like, you know, sit next to the smartest kid. How are your grades? Oh, not the best. I mean, they was good enough to make, right. push me through. Like, I was a really good cheater, though. And no really one, so your, your teacher catches on, but by that time, you're probably, what, five, six, seven years in on... Cheating. On living it. Yeah, making it work. How did that work for you at, at home? Did your mom know that you couldn't read or, or wasn't the best reader or anything of that nature? I was dumb, tired, stupid. I was a stupid girl. Dumbass, look like your ugly ass daddy. Like she would, um, she's a good storyteller though. She used to tell us like she would tell. Us, I didn't have to read to her much. She would do a lot of the reading, you know. Um, she read out loud all the time. So I just study everything she said. How do you not believe what your mom says? Though, you know, as a I kid. did believe her. But she wasn't like that at first. Right, right. So you had a lot of, like, she fueled you up with some good fuel first. Yeah. And then she started to siphon it away from you later. Snatch it. So at eight years of age, how do you compartmentalize that? Like, oh, that's not my mom, and my mom is different. Do you find, do you feel that right away? I just, just I don't know what's wrong with her. Mm -hmm. If I love her enough. If I help more, it you should be You put it on better. you. Yeah, that was me. But she used to always say, like, before her accident, <laughs> she used to always say, this is kind of mean, but she said, the only reason you're on this planet is to make it better, right? To make it better and to help me, make it easier for me. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. And if you're not making it better for me, then what, you, what the fuck you doing here? Go jump off a bridge. Come on now. Get to work. This is how you vacuum. This is how you this. You got to make things better. If you're in a space, you got to make that space better. No, come in a space and make it worse. Mm -hmm. Come in a space and make it better. Were you taking care of brothers and sisters? Yeah. Two sisters, two brothers. Who was taking care of you? Just you? I mean, my grandma would come by mm -hmm. every now and then. An auntie would show up every now and then. Uh, and I feel like, you know, me and my brothers, we tried to take care of each other yeah. as best as we could. They Like, my sister right under me, she's five years younger. So... She, it's like she was three, four, yeah. you know? So you had to be really hands-on, though. Yeah. yeah. I come from, like, with, with us, it's seven of us. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to my brother Keith, though. But, you know, single parent. My mom worked as hard as she could and took care of us. We weren't by far anywhere rich, but we were affluent when it came to love. And I couldn't imagine like how positive my mom was in my life, saying, oh, baby, you can become a thing, you can do this, you can do that. Because you know what? Because I don't know, Tiff, if I didn't hear that, I probably wouldn't have believed anything other than that. And I probably wouldn't have been able to come out of that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the most important person 
that you believe in your life, especially, and they're, and they're telling you something totally different. When do you go from your mom to your grandma, like your grandmother's house? Um, so my grandma would pop up a lot, and then we went into the system, and by the time I was What put like, you guys in the system? I'm not a, I wasn't a great mom. I was, I was trying my best with my sisters and brothers. You. And, uh, so you just put it on you? She was sick, man. Mm -hmm. She was sick. So, but my brother was going to school with like pissy clothes. He kept telling the teachers uh, he was hungry and all this stuff. And, um, and then, you know, social workers start showing up. And I was, I was, I was not the best. I, I tried. But, yeah, Do you go immediately to your grandmother's house, or did y'all nah, get put in the moved, system? we got put in the system. So my two brothers was put Separated. together. They were put together, and my two sisters were put together, and then I was by myself. And I first went to McLaren Hall. Um, I hate that place. <laughs> I was there for a little bit, very short period of time. Like Why did they send you to McLaren? Because they couldn't find a home for me. Oh, okay. And then the social worker found a home for me, came and got me, put me in that place, and then I was there for a little bit. And then um, then went to another place, another place, one more place. Then my grandma got me. You know how when people think they're saving you from something, did you feel like they were saving you from something, or did you feel like I need to be at home with? Well, my I was excited to go. I was like, like um, when I came home from school, uh, there was police in front of our house. My mom was in handcuffs in the back of a car. And I saw the social worker there. She had been coming, doing like, she had been coming by for about three or four months. Mm -hmm. And then um, she was like, that's it, you gotta go. So then she was putting stuff in trash bags for my sisters and brothers. And then she gave me a trash bag and was like, you know, bring what you need and bring you some clothes because it's guys are going. And, um, and my stepdad was there. Uh, he could have took my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And, he said he and couldn't. your brothers, were those his biological? Yeah, these are his, yeah, I'm the only one that's not his biological child. And he didn't even take his kids? Did you? No, he said he had nowhere for him to be. So. How old are you around that time? I was 13, and then, 12. How long were you in the system? Could you re kind of remain in the system? Yeah, I remained in the point. system. Even um, when your grandmother gets you, you're yeah. still in the system. And it's still in the system. Still How have to long go to were court. you in foster care with others before your grandmother? Like came? a year and a half? A year? Going to school, coming back. Mm -hmm. I was like making sure I was going to the same school. I, I kept going AWOL. I was getting in trouble for that. Um, and I had to go to court and tell the judge that this is the school. Like I was supposed to go like to Bethune or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to go to Bethune. I want to go to... The, the high school that I, where I'm comfortable, yeah. where I feel safe, where I, know how to, where I know how to work the system. I know everybody already, and I'm working that system. So, like, that's where I want to be. So I kept catching the MTA. That's back in the day when the yeah, MTA yeah. was hot. Right. And uh, or, I would be listening Probably even the RTD to back then, too. RTD, RTD, yeah. that's what it was. Hell RTD. yeah. Catching the RTD, listening to Power 106, with my little Walkman on the, on the school bus. I mean, uh, on the school bus. At first, then when we went into the system, I would jump on the RTD. It would take me an hour and a half, two hours to get all the way to the valley from South Central LA. Like mm -hmm. the first, like it was a situation. And uh, I would get up at like four in the morning, jump on this bus. And uh, that lady, the lady, the first lady I was with, kept saying she done left. She ran away or whatever. And this, the the social worker would be at the school by lunch. <laughs> by lunch, the social worker at the school. Dude, Tiffany, how lonely is that for you though? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I have fun riding okay. that bus. So the that was, RTD like a, that was, was a getaway fun. too. Yeah, that, I mean, you see, you go through all these different neighborhoods. Yeah, man. I mean, you drive. Were you from, dreaming too as you kind of? Yeah, I, out the I love staring at people. Yeah. <laughs> right, this probably was like a problem, but I was, and I got a lazy eye, so it moved around. So <laughs> probably not sure I'm staring at him, but I love what people watching. And so I would be on the bus. We started like on 108th and Normandy. And then I had to go all the way to Hollywood, through Hollywood, all through the whole valley, yeah, all, of, all of Ventura Boulevard. You see the demographic change. You see the people like change. And mm -hmm. then I would like sneak on the school bus because, uh, yeah, I would sneak on somebody else's bus to get like dropped off at the old, like my old bus stop <laughs> because I didn't know where the other bus stops was at that would be close to that place. And then, then like, um, once I went to court and stuff, it was crazy because uh, 
then I found out the homie, he was like, I saw you walking down Normandy. I was like, yeah. He was like, you know the bus pickup right there on the corner? Like, it was literally <laughs> on the corner. <laughs> so I could have just woke up at five and got on the school bus, yeah. but I didn't know <laughs> it was right there. But I thought, figured it out after a little bit. Hey, man, but, you know, when you explain going through the different areas, right, we used to stay on 90th in Vermont. Yeah. And we were homeless, so we were living with another family. And I would do the same thing going from every bus stop or just every area, you'll see the area start to change. You know what I'm saying? And then by the time I got to the west side, it was like a totally different world. Yeah. Than what I was seeing every day. All the whole demographic day. of the bus is different. Yes. The yes. whole demographic of the bus, yes. like going through Hollywood. Then you see that, like these old starlets getting on the bus. You could tell, I'm like, I could tell this bitch used to be a movie star. Yeah. The way she's like holding on to me <laughs> and sitting down and lipstick all around her mouth. <laughs> and then she's sitting there trying to read a script and shaking it. And I start talking to them. Like I would make friends just start talking to people. You say it was hard for you. You didn't learn, but you, you get to what, 11th grade? And that's mm -hmm. when you start to learn how to read. Mm -hmm. Does it kick in for you? And you say you started 10, to learn yeah. how to read in one day pretty much? No, it was oh, okay. every day at every lunch. Day. Every day at lunch, I had to go to her class and read to her. How did she find out? How did oh, she expose she you? she challenged my ass. Yeah. And I uh, I couldn't get out of there quick enough. So everything that usually worked. Did not you know. work, it did not work. And when I came back, like, so basically, uh, we had to read like, it's drama class, and she wanted us to read like this uh, monologue, right? So. I'll go, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. And go to the bathroom, find somebody in the hallway, be like, oh, I, hey, what's up? Oh, what's up? Oh, I like your voice. <laughs> you read it to me? They read it to me. And then um, I come back to the class, and then I'm like, you know, I do it, and then she's like, um, okay, do this one. I gotta go to the bathroom. No, 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 no. Do this first. Read this out loud first. Everybody's sitting there. I throw like a temper tantrum. You know, I don't got, I don't want to do all that. Like, the defense. throw a big old fit. Yeah, <laughs> throw a big old fit. And uh, I go to the bathroom again. And then when I come back, she's like, then everybody's class is over now. She's like, no, you're not leaving. Read this to me. And I could not. I could only read like the three letter words, the two letter words. I couldn't read if. If was really hard for me. That's a that's a that's a word that's super hard for me. That's a two letter word. In me. high school? Yeah, it's a hard word for me because it don't make no sense. I F. Right, but it if, is what it is if though. Sounds like E F. Right, but it so, is what it is. Yeah, and then she, she like called me out on it, and she was like, "Can you read, Tiffany?" I was like, "I read enough. I read enough." Your defense mechanism coming and, back. Yeah, and uh, she was like, "I need you to come in here every day at lunch." You what made you go lunch? every day at lunch? Because I wanted to be in the play. Right. So you follow a boy into the play, correct? Like, you like oh, some so guy? Oh, so there is. So, yeah. so I did. That's how I got into drama is because, uh, yeah, I had a crush <laughs> on this boy. Uh, it, the school I was going to was like 3% black. Mm -hmm. So there's not, a, like, not a lot of <laughs> options, right? So I really liked him, and he was the only black dude in drama. And so I was like, I'll, be the, I'll get in drama. And then we gonna have to kiss. They gonna put right. us together in something. Come on. But my, my drama teacher is a liberal. She believed in interracial relationships. Really though. <laughs> and I, I'm not feeling that. So did she pair him with someone else? Yeah. And that pissed me off. And it's the same lady that you were reading with further down the nah, line? No, no, this was in junior high. Oh shit. So that was uh, Miss Miss Young. Do you remember those? Yeah. So But we won a lot of drama festivals. I was winning all these festivals. Like that's the thing too, like um, I could I couldn't read, but I could I could act my ass off, and we was winning all these. You remember the drama festival? But how? Do, yeah. How, but how do you go from what's on the script word for word with somebody just telling you what it is? Like a teacher or somebody couldn't follow along, or you your memory was just like it was good. Shit. It was super good. And then once I learned how to read, it took that power away, right? It's like like it's a muscle I wasn't working no more. But like I could watch a TV show and then recite every single line from the TV show. That's like how focused I was, cause, you, cause is I your care. Memory tight, like when somebody say, "Girl, you said such and such." You're I'd like, be nah. like, "Wait, no, this is what I said." Yeah. Now maybe that energy, it's maybe different. the energy <laughs> is different, yeah, yeah. but this is what I said. This is what I did. This is what I was wearing. But like, it's um, it's cause I cared, right? Mm -hmm. And I think once I started learning how to read, my caring about like 
knowing everything started to drop because I could look, read now, and right. I can know, right? But um, I cared. Like, you remember what you care about. Mm -hmm. You remember how something made you feel. You remember yeah. all of that, right? So, like, while somebody's reading to me, maybe I could smell their breath. I'd be like, dang, they must have had some milk and they ain't brushed their teeth today. Or they whatever. Like, so everything is, like, locking in. So everywhere, and I stare at their lips while they're talking. And so I'm thinking, my, in my brain, my lips are going to move the same way. Their lips are moving. Like, it was just... I would lock it in. That's how I learned. So when you get the power of like, man, like you unlock this thing where I can read, does that start to bring everything else in though? Where you're like, like, man, I like you started doing, was it the competitions that you started doing? Was it, it wasn't Shakespeare. Yeah, no, we was doing that. We started, I started that in junior high school. Damn. The Shakespeare Drama Festival. And then there was like a spring festival. And like, um, I was doing Macbeth and all this. I was not reading, though. That's the but thing. What, I was not reading. I what was, like, about listening. The, we would rehearse. Was there something I remember where you got, like, an award that your family members told you that you weren't yeah, going to get? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, what was that? That was that was ninth grade drama festival, oh. and I was doing a monologue. And I ended up getting accepted um, into the gifted student program, too, because I had um, went gifted student dramatic arts. I was labeled. So then I got to go to Cal State L.A. every summer um, on Saturdays and take their their drama and dance art program. But Tim, with time wise, when you do the gifted program, you're still not reading or you're not reading. I'm just reading. Look, I I could I could see McDonald's. I know what that is. Right. I can write, but everything's gonna be misspelled. You know, it's going I'm gonna write what I think it sound like. That's I think that's why the thing didn't work out with Adi because I was sending him candy grams. And right, I would write little right. notes. That's the boy that you could, liked. Yeah, he probably couldn't understand. <laughs> like what Morse the code, like, what the like, fuck is this? What the fuck is this? But that's the snicker. So when do you get the comedy bug? You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, that's at, at, when I was 16, 15, about to be 16. How does that happen? Uh, my social worker, she was still coming up to the school a lot because I was getting in trouble uh, in my other classes for talking too much or doing, you know, uh, hustling. Did you know you wanted to be an entertainer? Like when you're doing Macbeth and when you're in the drama cl clubs and things of that nature. I wanted did to be you a know? horse farmer. Had, I wanted to raise horses. Had you ever had horses? No. Only riding them <laughs> at the Ralph's grocery store <laughs> parking lot. Like, I can Put another this. quarter in. <laughs> like. No, but they, you know how to, they used to bring yeah. the ponies? Oh, and they yeah. walk around in the circle. Yeah. Do, do you so have any pictures with my, you in the... Yeah. That's dope. Yep. And I wanted, I wanted that, I wanted to do that. I wanted that job. And I wanted to work. My grandma was always talking about, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. She used to love wearing pantyhose. And I wanted to work in the pantyhose factory because I wanted to be able to fix the, like make them. Right. And when I would get around, right. I wanted to be able to like fix it myself. Like, cause I could sew, I could knit, I could crochet, I could do other things, but I could not figure out how to fix pantyhose. Um, so I really wanted to do that. And I wanted to um, work at the Snickers factory because mm. I love Snickers. It's like my favorite. <laughs> I saw some in the bowl down there. Oh, yeah, you. I had to, I, no. But the, okay, well, we had a conversation. And I saw Oreos, too. I like yeah, Oreos yeah, as well. Yeah, but I had to have a conversation with myself. Uh -huh. And what you say? Don't I have said, it. look, I, you can look at it. Yeah. But we're not putting that in us today. And then there's another part of me that's like, no, please put it in us. No, we can't have that today. Not today. I'm going to have to remove it, too. Don't have it. It's okay. You sure? It's I don't, okay. don't want to be the one that make you back. It's okay. Side. Now, I might, uh, I ain't going to lie to you. I might just yeah. grab and, plus and already, put it in my purse, and I'm going to wait till next week. Stressful day. So if you yeah. do go to the chocolate, then, then I understand. Nah, I'll wait till next week right. when, when my cycle come through. <laughs> right? When so the cycle come through, that's when you can indulge. Take me back to your, your social worker and the comedy. Like, how does that happen where, she, where either she cares or well, what did she say to you? Well, because every time um, she would come to the school, she's like, Why, what are you doing? What are you doing this for? Why? And I would, like, make up some salacious, funny thing. And she's like, oh, you're just a little comedian, huh? You're just a little comedian. I'm like, no, I'm not a comedian. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> which was not what happened, really. Like, I would make up some story. And um, she was getting tired of it, and then she was saying, okay, so I used to uh, have this imaginary friend mm -hmm. called Cracker, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was a little bird that I would talk to on my shoulder, right? Um, this was to, this was would make the kids laugh, would make everybody laugh when I would talk to. And I would bring crackers, right? Uh, or I'd get them from the lunchroom or whatever, crackers. And I would be like, crack, and I would call the crackers Polly. And I'd be like, and you got remember this school is like 3% yeah. black. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, uh, cracker want a Polly. And I would like crumble them up on my shoulder, the, the cracker on my shoulder. Everybody would laugh, you know, and I would just be like, what's the answer number seven, cracker? Like, And then the teacher would be like, who are you calling? A, get out of here. I'm like, I'm talking to my bird. And like, I would have this whole conversation back and forth with the teacher. And they would get sent out of class for being racist. I was not being racist, though. I was talking Talk to my to bird. I was talking to cracker, my bird. Not to the person. Talking to my bird. Um, but I was using that as a way to distract and then... Right, right, look over. The test. Like, everything was for a purpose, right? Um... And I, I never got, I'm not surprised I did not get caught. Anyways, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, uh, she was getting tired of coming up there. She was like, look, you always doing whatever you're doing. You got two choices. You can go to Laugh Factory Comedy Camp. Or you can go to psychiatric therapy. Because something is wrong with you. Right. The Were way you you're afraid reaching, of the word psychiatric therapy? Yeah, because mom? my mom was going to it, doing it. The drugs they would give her, she would be drooling. She, she got really fat, like, you know. It's, uh, it was like almost I would prefer her not on the medication because at least she wouldn't like her skin would look like, like it was just so, it was, it's not a good look, mm-hmm. right? And they was experimenting on her, like trying to figure out what would work best. And so like when she, when the, when the social worker said psychiatric therapy, I was like, um, which one got drugs? Right. She said, oh, you probably be on drugs if you go to therapy. I said, well, then I want to go to the comedy camp. And um, I auditioned. And I auditioned with the monologue I had just won, like, first place in this festival with. And uh, Jamie Masada, the owner of Life Factory, was like, body, body, you're going to be a big star. Right. You're going to be a big star. I'm going to make sure you be a big star. It's, oh, it was excellent, excellent. So then I would go there every Saturday. And you catch the bus? I would catch the bus there. I would catch the bus there. And uh, it was crazy because I was balancing the two schedules, right? The, so early in the morning, like early in the morning, because on Saturdays from 9 to 10, uh, 9 to like 11, they had the um, the uh, the, the thing at Cal State LA. Mm-hmm. So I had to get up super early, get right up to Cal State LA, right? On the bus. On the bus. Then from there, go to the Laugh Factory, because from like 12.30 to to about 3.30, we would be in a comedy camp. Why did you do that? Because then I didn't have to be around my brothers and sisters. Got you. You see? It wasn't a love and at I'm, that and point. And I'm out of that space, right? And, and my grandma, you know, granted she's great, but my mom would show up. And my mom would say, like, I, I'm the reason she lost her kids. I took her kids away from her. I'm the reason she don't have her husband. I'm the reason. And I wasn't the reason. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, you know, I'll have to fight her on Sundays. It would be Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to square up with her. Right. So I'm, like physical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, and I'm like, I was just telling her the other day, thank you, Mom. Because any, I'm not afraid to fight anybody, right? And she was like 10 times my size, way bigger. She 5'10". I'm only 5'6", you know? Mm. She's over 200-some pounds. We're, and she was punching me like, like, them punches felt. Like how like, you wouldn't even probably punch a stranger. Mm-mm. Hard off. And then I kept coming back. <laughs> like, and, I'm, and I feel like I, I kind of laugh at it, but it's kind of messed up because you're not supposed to be, like, putting hands on your mom or whatever. But I feel like, you know, well, I'm, I, I'm at this age now. You could talk to me, and if you can't talk to me, you feel like you put your hands on me. And I feel like I'm about to die. Well, now I'm going to have to I'm gonna square up with you. So comedy camp was an escape. It was the best place on earth. I mean, that's what I learned. I learned a lot. I learned co- like confidence, when to be funny, when not to be, how to construct a joke. And I had just got reading good. So then like I'm writing I'm more and I could understand what I wrote. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, could, I always could understand. Looking back at old notes like, what the fuck? What is this? What is that? Um, and then it was the first time a man told me I was beautiful and I didn't think something bad was gonna happen. It was the first time a man told me I was smart. It's the first time a man hugged me 
and I didn't feel like he was trying to do something. You know, like I felt safe, and I and I hadn't felt that. Had you, you so you hadn't only felt, felt that safe at up. like school, never safe around adults, mm. right? Because they were they want to take you away, they want to violate you, they want to do something like so. Yeah, like most experiences was kind of negative when it came to somebody older. Would you suppose sometimes you find solace or you find like a comfort in that, but it, you were kind of afraid of it. Did you know that you were going to, as you're going through it, did you know that you were going to be either an actress or a comedian? I, I didn't want to be an actress. I wanted to be a comedian. I fell in love with it. Yes, it was like a place where I could talk about things and I found out I wasn't the only one going through it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the only one that's hurting. It takes a lot to laugh, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a power. Mm -hmm. Like, to get someone to laugh with you, like, or to laugh at what you're saying, or for me to even laugh at, like, somebody, it's tickling your soul. Like, your soul have to open up a little bit for that. Did you feel like comedy was a defense mechanism for you, too? Like, you couldn't let people, like, Definitely. we talked about it, but... Definitely a defense mechanism. Yeah. If I'm hurting, I'm going to amp up the comedy, I'm gonna amp it up. Like, I'm gonna go from, like, I'll be the most hype one in the room, the most whatever, so that um, nobody can see my hurt, right? Mm -hmm. They just be like, oh, she crazy, she wild. And I'll try to join a gang. Right. <laughs> join a gang. <laughs> you try, what gang, Tiff? I wanted to be a crip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to join six old crib. Oh, hello. Name it's like, take your ass to school. Your goofy ass, go to school. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I tried. They wrote you a lifetime, though. Yeah. You know, they wrote you a lifetime. When do you go from comedy camp being an escape to where you really want to be there? It's everything to you. And then you say, they had these Subway sandwiches, man. So it was they everything bring it, there, they though. Bring it. it was like, food. you knew you could eat, you knew you can get away. You knew you could tell your story. And you knew you were safe. nurtured by, by males, and it wasn't like they were trying to, they were really trying to help. Mm -hmm. They were listened. Were you hesitant and standoff at first? No, the first day I was lit because it was Charles Fleischer, mm -hmm. the dude that did the yeah. voice of Roger Rabbit. So were you always into Roger Rabbit? Yes. Oh, so shit. Like, so Man. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> like, did he do it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, this is crazy. Then um, Chris Spencer came. Yeah, I love right? Chris. And, and that like blew my mind because I was watching him on TV. So I'm just like, wow, these black men that I see on TV. And the Wayans came through. You said, the Wayans brothers, John and Marlon. Who was the big dog that came through? Richard Pryor. Yeah. Richard Pryor came through in a wheelchair, and I was like, ooh, rich people got wheelchairs. Yeah. I need to get there. <laughs> like, I didn't realize that, like, he was as sick as he was, because right. he was talking shit, so. He <laughs> like, gave you a moment, though. Huh? Yeah, he did. He stopped me in the middle of me telling my little He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm telling the truck, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. He goes, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. He goes, no, you're not. I said, what you think I'm doing? Because I get a little attitude. Right. I get saucy. And you getting saucy with Richard Pryor. I got though. saucy. Yeah, that fool said, you're getting on my damn nerves. That's what you're doing. People don't come to comedy clubs because they want to hear about your problems, because they want to, they don't want to hear about politics, religion, pop culture, all this. They don't care about all that. They come to have fun. So when you're on stage, you need to be having fun. It doesn't matter what you're talking about if you're not having fun. And you're not having fun. He picked that up? Yeah, well, did was, you know you weren't having fun, or did you realize, like, damn, wait? Man. Well, I was trying to hide. So I was trying to talk about something that happened that week, and I was trying to hide how much it hurt, trying to make it funny. And he picked that up. When you explain the unicorn thing, right? When we, I feel like the last black unicorn is empowering. Mm -hmm. But unicorn wasn't empowering for you early. No, not at first. No, nah, because I had, explain that. I had a uh, like I thought it was a mo, but it was a wart growing out my forehead, right? And the kids used to make fun of me. They used to be like, "Oh, look at Tiffany, you a dirty ass unicorn." And I had a mole right here, and I had this one here, and they'd be like, "Yeah, look at that. She got flies all on her face. She brought her roaches to school, and like they would just clown yeah, me. They would clown me, and I I was wearing the same kind of clothes." You know, uh, every Thursday I wore my orange jeans. And I always smell like eggs and onions because my mom was making that. Like, that's the only thing she could really cook. Um, so that's what we, I was smelling like at school. But it would just make fun of me. And um, then I was doing my own hair. And 
So I wasn't necessarily very pretty or very cute, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I wasn't very good at washing clothes. I was washing all the clothes. I wasn't the best at it because um, she didn't teach me all the way. Right. But I figured it out, and uh, you know, I just uh, they used to make these boys used to clown the fuck out of me. And at first, I used to be like. Well, that's why you ain't got no front teeth. And they're like, you don't got front teeth either, bitch. Like, they really <laughs> fucking... They fuck. Like, this ain't working. <laughs> like, you know, like... So, um, it would be this back and forth all the time. And um, and I would fight a lot. Uh, and I noticed if I laughed with them, if I started clowning too, mm -hmm. it would be a little better. You're laughing and at it, yourself? Yeah, laughing at what they say. Because at first it was like, it would bother me so much and I would want them to stop, but they'd keep going, keep going. So I would get the scissors, I cut, <laughs> cut, just cut it. The uh, the wart, just cut it. And it's a blood would fall down my face and I'd just be looking at them all crazy, like, yeah. And they'd be like, oh God, Tiffany's bleeding, Tiffany's bleeding. And everybody want to take care of me. Right, they go so you got the to, attention. Yeah, they go. it goes from like trying to hurt me, like verbally or, or whatever, to like, to helping me, and then uh, it, it was like, I can't keep hurting myself to get people to be nice to me. So I'ma just, I'ma I'm do what they do, right? So then they, like, it grew back, it grew back so fast, like, really? in, like, four days, so you, uh, and it would grow back bigger, <laughs> and it started really looking like a horn, like, it, it, it's, like, anyways. So I would start chatting, I'd be like, they'd be like, you a dirty ass unicorn, you a black, dirty, filthy unicorn. So I'd be like, so we grew back. I was like, you right, I am a unicorn. I'm about to stab you with my unicorn horn. And I would like chase them and we'd be laughing about it, you know. We'd be laughing. They were like, don't touch me, don't touch me. I'm like, I'm gonna touch her. Like, and um, I just, and it seemed like no matter where I would go, it was always like, these these dudes, I really want to say these niggas, right. always want to play the dozens, always like picking on me. But then um, I would pick back, so that might be why. Where does she ready come from? Uh, for me and my cousins going out to the club as um, oh, minors, and like you come out the house and be like, she ready? Okay, let's go. We finna have fun tonight. Or you come out the house and you don't look all the way to be like, mm mm, she not ready. She Take not your ready. ass back in the house. She not ready. We gotta comb that hair better. You gotta this, whatever. Like. Yeah. Do people not even sometimes address you by name? Like you could know somebody's there, they don't even know you're, as I'm saying, I'm saying you don't see them, but would they go, she ready? And you turn around like. <laughs> My favorite thing to do is people like, she ready? I'll be like, that's right. Or yeah. she ready. Or the, but if I'm not in the mood, I'll be like, mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't even turn and look. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. So some people did get some shitty, she, like, she wasn't ready. Like. Yeah, they just, wait, wait, I was in the Albertsons, I was in the Albertsons, uh, mask on, glasses, hat. I'm just doing my thing, not talking at all. And so I walked past me talking about, she ready? And I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, 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 bitch, you ain't ready? I was like, how do you know it's me? Yeah. And then the lady's like, I see your spirit, honey. I could see your spirit. I said, well, she trying to be quiet. Right. Damn, you didn't hit it with a low key, she ready? <laughs> like, like, from the spirit? No, like, she trying to be quiet. Damn. Do you know how to turn, not turn Tiffany on and off, but are there times when you do need those private moments and we can't put a quarter in your back and just... Yeah. 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 And people get mad, too. I do not care. She don't, she not ready. She right. don't feel like she it. She ain't ready right now. She don't feel like it. She don't want to. No. Is the gift can also be your curse? I guess if you look at it, yeah. it's a curse. <laughs> I guess so. I'm a, not I'm, in a bad way. On but. those days, though, on my cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm glad about, we didn't try to do this interview when you were on I your know, cycle. I know. I don't know why I be evil on, on my cycle, Man. but I be evil. But you know what? Tim? It's the people that's closest to me that get it. So. When you did Girls Trip, mm -hmm. did you know that that fucking movie was gonna be amazing? Did it read like that in the script, or it was it Tiffany Haddish had to play that part? Well, I, I, when I read the script, I was laughing out loud, and I was like, who been following me? Who been in my circle? Who knows me? Because I felt like I was reading about nights that had, mm -hmm. adventures that I've been on, right? So <laughs> I was like, wow. So then I go to the 
audition. Like, I had to audition four times. You had to times. audition. Four times. They didn't even want to see me at first because they wanted a name. And I told my agent, you tell them that I had a name since 1979 and it's Tiffany motherfucking Haddish. They didn't mm -hmm. let me come in. I'm coming in. And they let me come in. And I had, like... I was auditioning with like the associate <laughs> casting director who's filming it. Yeah, not then, seeing like, nobody. Uh, assistant, like film. Then the, finally the casting director. Then the, finally the director. And, and um, yeah, because but I did not know it was gonna be. Uh, I did not know Tiffany. I just knew that it was one of the things on my list, like working with Jada Pinkett Smith. It was one, it was on my list of you know when Kevin when I was <laughs> when I was homeless and Kevin's like get this get you a room for a week and make out a list of goals. Right, and that was on my list to work with Jada Pinkett Smith. It was on. It was your on my list. list. My prom dress, my prom dress, '98 prom dress, was I made me and my auntie made it, and I had saved up all this money to buy this material so I could copy the dress that she was wearing on the red carpet with Will Smith, with her stomach out and all that. And like I always loved her, I always like liked what she was doing, like what she stood for, and then. When this opportunity, and, and, and then I was homeless. And you knew Jada was attached to it. Yeah, they said Queen Latifah, Jada, and Regina Hall. Mm -hmm. And they looking for one more person. They only wanted a name. And so, and, and like I opened up my notebook there, her name is on that. It's, she's on my freaking list. That's one of the few things I haven't accomplished. And our time get cloudy. Do we know Tiffany Haddish then? Like, it felt like I knew Tiffany yeah, Haddish. Yeah, you knew, yeah, you definitely knew me. You definitely knew me then. And but I feel like people the hood, looking like, okay, I gotcha. feel like the hood knew me. Gotcha, like, I was gotcha. running rooms, killing it here and there, appearing on different TV gotcha. shows, little comedy competition shows. I was on the Carmichael show. Gotcha. I had a movie, Keanu, just come gotcha. out. I was in a few other movies before that. Like, on, I was on some but of the white sitcoms. this was different. That this was, like, four black women. And when I read it, I was like, this is the best way to exhale, but better. Like, to me, it was way to exhale, but better. But I didn't know if it was going to trend. Because sometimes you read a script and you're like, well, this made me laugh. But then yeah. it, when it comes out, you're like, what the like fuck is this? Like, theater of the mind could be different sometimes. Right. And yeah. it was making me laugh out loud when I read it. So I'm just like, I got to lock this Did in. you know what you could do with that early? Like, oh, my God, if I get this. Yes. Oh. I knew. If, if, and I'm like, if the director let me play, <laughs> if the director let me play, it's going to be, I'm, I know I'm going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. I'm going to earn my little funky bit of money they trying to get me. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then four days before rehearsal start, they tell me I got the part and you're going to be there for like two, three months in New Orleans. I was like, oh, damn. Pack it yeah. up. She ready. Yeah. Let's go. There's a difference between somebody laughing at you or the way that you would feel growing up with, with family. Was this like, like something where it's like, man, I really need this? Yeah, I, like... I've been able to, like, okay, so sometimes <laughs> I've been able to detach if somebody's laughing at you. Right. I've been able to detach because the sound is the sound, right? The sound, the tone is the tone. Yeah. And yeah. I will, for, uh, like, I will, my, I might be a crack, crackhead for laughs. Right. Right? I might be a crackhead, <laughs> yeah. keep a crackhead chasing for that, chuckles. I keep chasing, chasing that, like, that high. <laughs> like, uh, um, and I will detach the negative that's on that laugh and just take, what's good from it, right? What I needed. But uh, I'm able, when somebody's laughing because of you or at you or whatever, they're laughing, you have tickled their soul. Their soul opens up. Like you open up a little bit. Like their organs are being massaged. This is, you know, I'm activating something. Cause it's, people don't just go, just wake up and be like, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's like, that has to be invoked. There's a certain power attached to that. You want to make me feel bad? Hang hang out with me all day and don't laugh at shit. Don't right, smile. Right, right, don't right, laugh. right. And that's how some of them relationships You know what? <laughs> like, you know what's crazy? Well, this is horrible. <laughs> like, years ago, I used to do comedy shows, right? Mm -hmm. And you would come and do the comedy shows. And I'm pretty sure that the comedy shows were free. I don't know how you got there. I don't know if you were leaving and sleeping in your car. But your energy then was A1. You know, and anybody can sit back and say, oh, I knew she was going to make it. I knew she was going to make it. I knew she was going to make it. And you said you used to call my radio show. Yes. <laughs> when I was a teenager, 17. Okay, so you know my Uncle Damon. Yes, yes. And, um, I love he, his ribs. I love yeah, his sauce. me too. Me too. You know? And I cook, just like, I'm working for him too, learning how to, I was his sous chef. Anyways, 
he uh, gave me the number to the like the the, the lens, inside the line. Inside uh. line. And I called and um, I was trying to hit, I was trying to hit like you would have these joke things or whatever. And I was trying to hit you with the good jokes, but my jokes wasn't that good. And you'd be like, well, keep working at it. Damn. And you'd be like, work at it. I mean, bro, that, shit, that was garbage. <laughs> like, I don't think I said that. I you probably didn't was say like, it was I was garbage. like, dude, you're going to be huge one day. I didn't say that? Yeah, once you met me in I person. Okay, and, and I was, was like, and man. I was doing your I was shows. like, you're going to be a Grammy Award winner. Like, you're going to do You didn't girl, say nothing about Grammy I didn't say women. girls. Tri- no, I, I you didn't, didn't say girls. Tri- no, you just said, you You said your heart and your energy is so good. I remember House damn. of Blues. Uh, maybe really? it was BB's then. It was BB King's. BB King's. Yeah, the, yeah. Upstairs and, at the. Yeah. Yep. And that's that was like the first time I met you in person. And what was that guy's name? He spoke Japanese too. That got me on the show. He was like a promoter or something. PJJB, or whatever. Anyways, he's the one that told me about your show. Got me in, and then I was. It was like a contest or something. Then you start yeah. having like actual shows. All Dude, the time. I'm so glad that we had great interaction though Mm -hmm. if big or small because there's some people that you remember and you'll say either that person was an asshole that person tried to get at me that and then when you get on everybody there's a lot of people that's probably extremely still nervous that you're on yeah and they know i don't forget shit yeah we know that shit (laughs) they know i don't forget certain things and so uh some comments are coming to me that was like off the chain, like, yo, can uh, can we do a tour together? Can we do this? And, and I'm like, are you gonna open your legs? Cause you got it from them. Yeah, cause they said like when I would ask them, like five years, ten years prior, hey, can I go on a road with you? Can I open up for you? Yeah, if you open up them legs, you gonna open them legs. Have you had a chance to say it back to somebody that's yes said it to you? Yes, I've been saying it. I'm waiting for them to try to meet to me. All right, so what did he, what did he say? When you <laughs> he go said, like, yeah. yeah. I said, <laughs> he was like, open my legs. I mean, I don't got to open my legs. I could just put my pants down. I mean, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to open them legs. And I, you're going to let me do to you what you wanted to do to me. Are you crazy as fuck, Tiff? You, you nuts. You hey, fucking man, nuts. Hey, man, that power switch got to be a motherfucker, though. And not that you abuse it, but you recognize yeah. it. Like, yeah, and, I, and, I, and then they be like, well, I mean... No, no, I ain't doing all that. I ain't no pussy ass nigga. I ain't no pussy ass nigga. Yeah, well, you are though. Mm. But you are though. Because you tried to take advantage. Were you just doing the person right now? Yeah. Tiffany, I thank you for coming and hanging out with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you answered every question. And you, with me, you've always been A1 since day one. And every time I see you, grab something, you know, an, an accolade or, you know, we know the story, but we don't, we thought we knew the story, but we don't really know the story. And for you to tell and share your story with us once again, and it's so inspirational because there's so many people, Tiff, that probably count themselves out or think they can't. Other, other entities tell you you can't, you know, and the way that you found, you, you know, your laughter, your beauty, your happiness, your strength, all that when it felt like there was so much against you, you know, to say, oh, we applaud that, that that's, that's a common phrase. Like, you lived it, we see it, and you're such an inspiration to me as well. I love your energy, I love to see you, and what I wanna do here is, we always talk about people afterwards, oh, you know, this person, this person. You mean a lot to us, you mean a lot to me. And what I want to give to you, Tiffany, this is called Big Boy's Flowers. And with Big Boy's Flowers, it says, your journey thus far has been amazing. Through the many adversities, you've managed to stay on course. Life couldn't knock you off your square. You like me now? She ready, yeah. <laughs> and I wrote this. Life couldn't knock you off your square. She ready for everything. You're not just a beautiful, funny, talented queen. You're truly the last black unicorn. Continue to entertain and inspire us. Love you, Tiffany. Thank you for being you. Thank you. I really, I really, man, you fill my little heart up. (laughs) Thank you. This is beautiful. You know, and I mean. I really appreciate it. I'm very sensitive. Right, (laughs) same, same. 
But I wrote it like I wrote it and I could have got seven trophies. You know what I'm saying? Just just writing things. But like I said, you really are a beautiful person. Thank you. And I thank you for that. And thank you for allowing me to give you your flowers today. Thank you. I love you. And thank you for giving me this kind of flower so it don't die. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. I really please. appreciate you. Thank Tiffany you. Haddish, thank you for your time. Thank you, big God boy. God bless you, Queen. God bless you, King.